So here we are. It's, uh, it's an election week or whatever uh, elections here in South Africa. It's for that. This is the municipal elections, not the national elections, which I think is next year. Anyway, um, so we're we're deep into it. Wednesday, we, we're on, this is a Sunday. That I'm talking to you on Wednesday is when they when they vote. But I find something interesting. If you hear some sounds uh, and some droning on, some ambient, uh, that's because we're here on a Sunday at the University of Fort Hare in my office. But upstairs in the some certain classrooms, they always have church service. Yeah, I know church and state or church and school, so we separate. But you know that's how they roll. I guess they're not using classrooms for anything else. They might as well. So, but but strangely enough, some of the church songs sounds like struggle songs. I should say struggle songs, but came from the church and all the rest. This is the history of South Africa. So let's leave that alone for right now. Here's what's interesting. Uh, I got back uh, about a week ago, week ago Friday, and um, I think uh, well, get back to Alice. But I was uh, that Thursday, week ago Thursday, I was in Cape Town. Uh, just for the day before I called a taxi that brought me to Alice. And so I was walking, I did a lot of running around the Cape Town. I didn't see a lot of people that I knew, but, but uh, we go on some other time. Uh, but I was walking down what's called Plain Street. It's a, it's a, we're in Parliament, with a Parliament house in, in, in Cape Town. There's Parliament in South Africa, both in Cape Town, and, well, in Cape Town, and also the sessions are in Pretoria as the capital or whatever. Anyway. So uh, I was walking down the other, I was walking past, and then that, since, since it was Parliament, I said, "Hey, wait a second. So my, my research group at Dumbaza, they need some copies of the Constitution, you know, in, in, in the easy close up. You see? Now I figured in the Parliamentary House they would have uh, copies of the Constitution in all the like eleven or twelve um, official languages of the of the thing. But I went there, and they said, "Oh no, we don't have that there. You have to go down to the Justice Department, which, like it from name, was right down." Street and Plain Street, so I walked to the Justice Department, the office in the Justice Department, and I walked upstairs, and they said, oh no, we don't, we don't have copies of the Constitution here, you got to go to the magistrate's court. Well, luckily I knew where the magistrate court was, which was a couple of blocks away, I walked in, walked to the magistrate court, then I went to uh, one office, and they said, well, I forgot what the office was, like the administrator, anyway, they, they, they said, oh no, you have to go to the clerk down there, so I went to the clerk, and then they said, no, no, they said, you have to go to the, um, uh, the um, what, do you, what do you, what those people at translations uh, department, which was right down, right down the hall. So that, that makes sense to me, the translation people would have, you know, copies of the Constitution. So I went there and they said, oh, no, we don't have copies here. You have to go to the, the, to, to, to the you know, the, the cashier with some thing over there and they'll tell you where to go. So I went there and they said, oh, no, we don't have copies here. But it was very nice and they said, you got to go upstairs to room, I think, uh, 152 or something like that. So I went upstairs. <laughs> I'm exhausted already. So I went upstairs and I went into the room. There was one, you know, one, one, one woman sitting there. So I just dragged myself into the room after all this running around. And I sat down, said, just, I got to catch my breath. Of course, I was being dramatic and all the rest of that stuff. It was, you know, whatever. So I said, no, uh, they said that you might have copies of the Constitution here. And she says, oh, no, we haven't had copies of the Constitution in years. He said, you have to go online and, and, and uh, you know, and, and pull it down. So I, I said, oh, okay. So she gave me the address on, you know, the dot gov, dot you know, whatever the thing is. So the moral of the story is, if you have the... The, the capability, now if you're in a village, or if you're, you're a kid or something, in fact, well, one thing, she says, a lot of students, I am a postgraduate student, a lot of students come here for copies and have to tell them the same thing. They have to go online and, and you, uh, I guess you, you download it or something like that. But now think about it, you know, this means that, you know, you have to have the capacity to get on, to get online, you know, and then you have to have the, and in South Africa, broadband or, or internet costs money, you know what I mean? So then you have to have the money, you know, basically, and then to print it out, you see? The government may be sending, saving some money by not printing it, but this is a constitution, it lasts for a long time, you can print up, that doesn't matter. So anyway, so you gotta go through all that. Now here I am, you know, thinking, you know something, it's easier for me to get a printed hardbound copy free of, of the of the of the Holy Bible or the Holy Quran, you know, uh, uh, that it is for me to get the, const the copy of the Constitution of this country. I suspect it's the same in the United States of North America, which is where I hail from. Uh, I guess it is. I have never actually tried to get a copy. Uh, I think you can get them. Anyway, the point is, whew, boy, 
it's rough trying to be a citizen. You you must you you can be a religious citizen, but to be a citizen citizen to know your rights and to read up on your rights, it's difficult. I suspect it's difficult all around the world, and that's just in my opinion. Me T from the Patterson taking the trenches to bed. Let you know what I always.